So hello from Berlin. I'm Sebastian. I'm happy to have this opportunity to share with you uh, what we do with agents and, and um, how we think that will change how we automate uh, work. Um, so we are a startup uh, based in Berlin. Um, that originally it comes from the Fraunhofer Research Institute. Um, so I myself work first in research before actually becoming the, the founder of the company. Now, um, let me start. So um, typically the companies we work with, they don't have enough employees to handle all the data that's coming to them. What you see actually on the, on the slide is actually real data. So in the last 14 seconds that the slide is on, uh, there were more than 50 companies founded around the world. Uh, we have almost 800 news articles by now. So there's an explosion of information and um, simply people Googling for that information cannot really, um, is not the solution because there's simply not enough people um, to do that. Uh, on the other hand, we see that there are ways of people say, yeah, it could be automated it, but somehow we don't really know how we will do it. Um, and so um, one thing, one approach that is very popular right now are those big, gigantic general models that try to solve everything. Now we find that um, because of their generality, they have problems answering specific business questions. And they might be good for generating text for marketing purposes, but when it comes to real serious business questions, we find them actually really, really hard to use. And so you can see here an example of where we are looking for contract manufacturers, so a specific type of companies in Eastern Europe with specific criteria. And then you get this, this result from an AI, um, which is a little bit typical of the model, which is like very, very confident. And it's like, it sounds super good. The sentences are excellent, but actually in this case, the results are really wrong. So we don't answer um, the customer's question. And so we were thinking like, okay, what could be the, a different approach of how we can handle um, automation? Um, and so what we do is we build agents. So that means we have specific um, agents for specific tasks that are working sometimes around the clock. So while people sleep, they have the agents working for them. And so each agent is then trained for specific data sets with a specific data pipeline, as I will show you. And by that, we can achieve higher accuracy um, than you would with it just applying one big model. Um, and so um, we have agents and that do several different things. Um, basically, there are three big topics. One is for finding and monitoring companies. That's uh, the first line of agents that we have. Then the second line is about technologies, scientific publications, patents, and so on. And then the third one is about um, finding politicians, understanding what's happening in the political landscape. And so today I want to show you a little bit um, generally how it works, but also specifically how it works in some cases. So um, in our case, the, the users, they can give tasks to the agents. The agents are pre-programmed, pre-trained, and then the agents go out, read big data sources, whatever that might be, websites, um, existing databases, and so on. And then we use entire pipelines of, of data handling, uh, applying all sorts of smaller open source, um, non-open sourced uh, models in order to achieve uh, the results, which are typically reports, um, uh, graphs, um, or whatever um, um, the result um, should be. So um, just one exa very concrete example, the one I started with, um, is um, we have a client, they, they contracted a professional search agency um, to find them um, suppliers. And, um, and so it's actually very tricky. You might think it's just a Google search away, but it's not the case because you have to go very deep in order to understand if a company really qualifies as a supplier. And so um, what we were able to do is to build an agent that can find companies fully automatically uh, qualify them, check for specific criteria. Um, and so in this case, we were not only be able to be faster and cheaper, which is relatively easy with this technology, but we also were able to produce better results. Um, and that's in the end, the core question, like can we find potential suppliers uh, that are interesting? And of course, here with the specific AI, we are able to reach levels of like 99, above 90% 90 of, of precision and, and, and recall. Uh, so we find all the companies that are out there and the ones that we find are actually relevant. Um, and so that's, that's one use case I'm showing you a little 
but how that works. So in this case, there are hundreds of agents actually that run in parallel, scan the web and um, analyze this information uh, in order to find a result. We have built the system in a way that one agent can work with another agent. Um, so, and one agent can duplicate itself. So when it sees that the task is very complex, it can say, okay, I split this up into hundreds of subtasks that then are being handled by other sub agents. Um, so we have built this very modular system where one agent is able to work for many different use cases. And then on the other hand, agents are really um, running at scale. We also have a payment system. Our agents actually get a salary. Um, and so um, we, call, we call that we, we handle that with agent tokens. So customers buy agent tokens and then the agents um, use them um, as we, um, yeah, for, depending on the complexity of the task. In general, we have like um, a few different modes of operation. The, the smaller companies we work for, they typically just rent an existing agent. So the one that already was built and they just configure it for themselves. We help them maybe a little bit doing that, but in generally it's the agent as it is. Um, um, that's what we call the agent store. Yeah? And then we have other bigger customers typically who say, but can you not change the agent or enhance the agent or even build a fully new agent for us? Um, and um, then we do an, in, in what we call an agent factory project. Yeah, So we have a, an, a very close interaction where we check and compare with human results and see how we can have agents that perform well. Uh, we also collaborate with others where they sometimes build their own AI models and we then help them wrap it into an agent so it becomes a usable um, product. Um, yeah, so I, I now have prepared a few cases um, for you um, to share um, concrete things that we're doing. Um, right now, we are, we are um, working mostly in four industries. Uh, so pharmaceutical, energy, defense, and, um, and for government organizations. Uh, and I will share with you a few cases what we did with Bayer, um, the pharmaceutical company, but also with Petrobras in Brazil, actually, um, in, the, in the field of energy. And so, um, so yeah, let me just show you a little bit how it works. So this is a small demo video, but it's the real system. So <clears throat> what you see here is how you first invite an agent into those information spaces that we have. So you really form a team of humans and agents, and then you give, can give tasks to an agent. And so the first agent that you will see here is a news agent. It reads the news in 150 countries, um, and you can configure it. So you can say, um, in this case, we're looking for trade policies, uh, sanctions, free trade agreements, what's happening around the world for these topics. And so the agent goes, translates the topic, has been pre-trained, so it knows the countries of the world, it knows the politicians of the world, and comes back after a few minutes with a with a briefing of what's happening around the world, automatically translated, grouped by topics, um, um, sorted by relevance, um, and um, in order to give you like a global overview of what's happening um, regarding this topic. The second agent that you see here is where we monitor specific companies. So we have agents that run day and night to just check if there are new events, could be weather events, could be acquisitions of companies, um, and could also be something like a COVID case in a Chinese port um, that the agent finds in Chinese news and relates it to the port. Um, and then finally, you see this, this example of the company search um, where you also can see that the reports are interactive. So actually, when we have a value of high confidence, which is this big dot that you saw, you can actually click it and see and check what is the data um, that, that is behind that. Um, so, um, so now you saw a little bit like how the agent work uh, and just to do to show you again so you saw now company identification it's one thing that we are working very actively on um, so far we still have to train the agent um, for specific uh, um, for specific applications. So in this case, the agent is like pre-trained for pharmaceutical suppliers. So it understands what are pharmaceutical suppliers, but then it can search for anything from creams to lipsticks to um, uh, tablets that you had here, uh, bubble gum, yeah? So anything that uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, might produce or might make. Um, and, and we can find all those companies automatically. <clears throat> so the human only provides the, the criteria and the geographic region, and then the agent comes back out um, uh, with the report. So you can also run this continuously to check if there, if there are changes in the market and have an overview. That's uh, super important here. Um, the core thing is this is not based on a 
database. So we don't know the companies in advance. Instead, we mimic how a, how a human would go through. So the agent goes through the website, checks what do they describe about themselves, takes this, analyzes this, judges this, in order to um, finally um, produce the report. Um, the second thing that you saw was a company monitoring. Um, so here really the, 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 the user just tells the agent, okay, this is the company I'm interested in. This is the location I'm, I'm looking for. And then the agent just goes out typically every day, um, reads the news, reads their website, check if there are changes to their website, and then classifies those events automatically saying this is a product announcement, um, change in management, an important other event or so. So we can um, do that. It's especially interesting if you are like a global company because then um, you might have this supplier in Brazil or in Mexico and you don't even speak Spanish or Portuguese. So it's very, very hard for you to know what's, what's um, going on. And so in this case, this is um, fully automated. Um, and then the, the, the third case that you saw is this news agent, which we actually just two days ago at, at, um, uh, like extended so that it also covers uh, LinkedIn and, um, and Instagram and, um, and YouTube as media sources. Um, and so um, uh, the idea really is to go out around the world, check everything, translate everything, um, also make impact scores. So to detect if it's an article in the New York Times or a small Japanese local newspaper and distinguish between that. The agent also, as I mentioned, it knows all the politicians. So it constantly is aware of who's the prime minister in Japan, who's the trade minister in Japan, who's the, uh, I don't know, the um, environmental um, minister. So when it comes to this topic, it understands that um, something might be more relevant um, uh, or more important um, than um, than something else. So that's the first use case now in this case for and more in the world of supply chains and um, and um, understanding news. Um, I want to show you this this the second quick um, demo um, where we show um, case how we use it in in Brazil with Petrobras um, to not only look into um, companies but also look into the politics of things. So well, how are people positioning themselves and what are they saying? So <clears throat> actually this, um, you can jump, this is just the introduction. Um, and now you can see the real demo. So again, you can see a little bit how you log in into the system uh, and then you have those workspaces that you can work with. So in this case, we first um, um, talk about people. So we wanna know who are all the politicians, thousands of po um, politicians that are interesting. What are their um, um, sources? So we have an agent that can collect automatically those people and then, then put them into a database. And we can also identify people that we don't know. So that we have agents that produce graphics for um, showing us really relationships between people, like who is talking about a certain topic, and we exclude um, uh, many people. So there's like lots of steps that we don't have, I don't know, the BBC um, as, a, as a stakeholder. And then we start to monitor those people. Like every 10 minutes, sometimes we collect all the information um, that um, uh, becomes available to them um, so that we can then later analyze that. And that includes public speeches in the government. Um, uh, it includes uh, Twitter, press clippings. Yeah, so everything that we can collect um, for those um, uh, politicians. And then we can um, run analysis. Yeah, So we can see how often are those thousand people talking about something, which is fairly simple. It's just a frequency analysis. But we also can then take this text apart and really look into um, like, what are they saying? So um, who is saying what? Um, and so when we analyze that, um, we eventually get to a place where we can say, as a for a company, like if you are interested in a certain topic, who is the most important media source because they are talking about this very negatively or they're talking about it very positively. And, um, and also we can track people over time. So what is the politician saying over time? So if you have some certain actions or things that are happening in society, you can see how topics evolve um, and how you can potentially uh, react um, um, and really understand like who are the most critical people to deal with or to tackle first uh, so that you can uh, um, understand better um, how to navigate this this complex space. As you can imagine right now, maybe you've heard in Brazil, there's a government change. So there's huge questions about how will the energy, how do we deal with renewable energies? Uh, what is the role of a state company uh, in the general government? Um, and then of course, also something that you can see here, we can then of course just give you this feed where you can check what's happening uh, regarding um, um, certain areas. 
um, again, um, here, this is like our news agent, but you can see that we reuse the agents. Yeah. So we have, um, an agent for instance, that, um, that is used in many different work workplaces. So it's used at Bayer. It's also used at Petrobras. It's used in other smaller companies, um, that, um, that, uh, that we are running Yeah, and Petrobras. We also have this area of technology. So we have agents that produce scientific state of the art reports analyze scientific data uh, put it together into reports so our idea is really is to get people as close as possible to the final work result that they really need so if you need a report about what's happening how do you decommission oil platforms what's the state of the art um, that you get it's very quickly we can also find experts that's an um, an excel sheet here um, that is being generated i want to know who are the experts knowing about a certain topic uh, in the agent automatically um, analyzes it runs top detections and uh, to do that yeah. um, as I mentioned before we have a partner also that we um, work with to analyze patents in this case we have an agent that is able to take any technology text and classify it into one of 250,000 different labels um, for for how a, a patent can be classified um, and um, and then um, put it um, understand like what are important patents in this um, in this particular case yeah so um, patents and patent classification becomes more more important for us um, because it is a, a, a core driver of understanding where um, technology is going. Yeah, and then we um, um, what you saw here this political uh, topic we call it a political seismograph agent uh, where we really continuously scan. This is actually not only one agent. There's maybe like five or six sub agents that runs different tasks collect information store it analyze it take um, newspaper articles analyze the people in it extract people from it and you can see there's a lot of like different um, tasks for natural language processing, sometimes uh, with translation, sometimes without translation, lo using local languages. And so mm, that's, that's um, but that's all built in the agent. So the user really only cares about like, okay, I'm interested in, I don't know, what's happening with diesel in Brazil. And then all that information is being pulled together automatically. Um, the whole um, the whole dashboard actually that you saw is created automatically by one agent, um, and then um, and then the users can just um, see the information and use it as a drill down and enjoy this like rather complex information processing, um, really really simply. So. Um, um, yeah, and then the stakeholder mapping here again, um, what we do is we, we find people, um, we go through their history, we check, are they really the people that influence this topic or are they only talking about it once? How do they relate to each other? Who is talking to whom? And so this agent generates this graph of stakeholders. Um, uh, right now, they started with a Twitter analysis. We will now integrate the news into it. So we'll have more and more richer media sources about who is talking about whom and and who is actually in a person that is like influential in a certain um in a certain topic so um we started this whole thing to bring agents to the world because um we really believe that um all people uh, including all of you listening here uh, will and should work with agents in a not so far away future because um it just makes so much sense that um, that you have those intelligence services. And then it also just makes so much sense that these services are able to talk to each other. Because um, like our, if you ask like, what is your competition? Then typically each agent has a competitor, so to speak. But what we are able to do is we can find your company and then we can start monitoring it. We can start to analyze their technologies. And so um, it just makes so much sense that you have these different agents uh, talking to each other. We're still a relatively small team um, at this stage. Uh, we are, um, yeah, um, but we, our ambition is, is, is quite big. Uh, so we're also thinking and, and talking to investors at the moment. Um, but um, 
but um, because our our core idea is actually to open this up to developers. Yeah, we want that people can uh, eventually all developers and maybe eventually all people can develop their own agents and can put these agents to work with other agents. Yeah, so if you need a special service, you could build it and you could connect it to our news agent, and then this news agent would give you the information that you need. Uh, and so we are now basically down to like I think it's like thirty lines of code to go from a piece of a Python script or an AI model to a fully running agent that is um, scalable, runs um, if necessary hundreds of times in parallel in the cloud, gets the task, handles them, is being paid for um, uh, and so on. This is really our vision of computing, I have to say. Uh, we're not so big believers of the metaverse idea because um, it's just like if, if things get more and more automated, um, it just doesn't make so much sense anymore to stare at the computer all the time um, for work at least. Um, and so um, and so we really have this vision and this idea that eventually um, we should just you know give tasks to the agents and then the agents will handle it for us and come back with very, very real results. And we see that many, many things are already possible from agents producing PowerPoint presentations and that also the humans are typically um, not so great, I have to say, at dealing with these large amounts of information. Uh, maybe just a few more words about us. I mentioned that before we started at Fraunhofer a Research Institute in Germany um, and then eventually um, decided to, to, to become independent, uh, went through um, some startup uh, challenges and competitions with, with uh, SAP in Capgemini that we won. Um, and then we um, ended up winning um, a quarter million euro uh, from a German energy company. Um, and so they are now also, um, um, it's called E.ON and they're not part of our um, uh, company. So they own a share in the company. But other than that, we are just really um, um, living from um, our customers, um, um, uh, um, the services that we provide to our customers and are um, really thinking that, you know, we, we don't know if it really, if it will be us, we hope, of course, but we think that this general approach of computing where the computer becomes more independent and does more for you, that this approach is one that will eventually um, take over the world and replace many, many of the services that we spend so much time with at the moment. Yeah, so that's um, presentation from myself. 